Okay. Welcome to this live stream. I know the the time said it was going to start in 20 minutes, but that was a typo. Today, we're going to be talking a little bit about the drummer track. And um, the reason I'm talking about this is because I'm ever hopeful that uh, Apple will release a new version of Logic and have an improved drummer track on it. So we're going to do an overview of what the drummer track is. And we're going to look at uh, all the features of it because it's an amazing tool and one that uh, I think is still one of the best parts about Logic, in my opinion, even though there's room for improvement. And we've been hoping for improvement now for some number of years, right? So even though there's room for that and uh, we're ever hopeful, I think it's still nice to be able to maximize exactly what we get out of this tool. And so that's what we're going to look at right now. We're going to talk about uh, as many different parts of this particular instrument as we can as a review. Uh, hopefully there'll be some of you joining and asking questions and, uh, and looking for specific clarification. But uh, even without that, we're just going to explore this tool and, and talk about it in as much depth as we can. So first and foremost, there's really two parts to a drummer track. There's the drummer, um, the actual drums, I should say, the drums that uh, we are triggering and we have the overall drummer track region, which is what controls the drummer. <clears throat> so we're going to start by talking about that section first. Uh, this is really tightly tied in with the library. Uh, and that's because this is where we can choose uh, relatively easily among all the drummers. And we have a bunch of different genres, not all of the genres of music. Clearly, this is one area that uh, there's room for some improvement. And we're hoping that we do get some improvements in this area. But we have rock, alternative, songwriter, R&B, electronic, hip-hop, and percussion uh, in terms of the overall styles that we have drummers. Now, not all of the drummers here use the same drum kit designer. Uh, in fact, some of them use the drum machine designer, and that's a whole different system. But uh, what we have uh, are really split between those two areas, the drum kit and the drum machine. And so we can use uh, one of those depending on which one we want. So like, for instance, Rock, I click on Kyle. It brings up down here uh, a number of different things. We have the beat presets. Uh, we have the ability to change between simple, complex, soft, and loud on the matrix. And then we have uh, three different areas here, the percussion, um, in this case, the hi-hat right now, and then the kick and snare. But we also have toms or cymbals, so we can choose between those. We don't have the ability to choose more than one of those at a time. The percussion, we can uh, also choose between them. And then the slider changes the pattern. So a lot of information in a small little window. And we're going to look at this more in just a moment. But uh, this essentially tells us the makeup of the pattern and which things that they're triggering. And um, over here, we have amount of fills in this particular drummer region amount of swing, whether it's 18th or 16th, and then a details button, which brings up different things. <clears throat> and with these things, we have the ability to change the feel. We can make it, oh, there goes my mouse. We can make it push or pull, and that's a tempo operation compared to the tempo of your project. Um, we have the ability to add more or less ghost notes, and then we can change how the hi-hat pattern is working. Uh, right now, you see that's grayed out. Um, if we turn on the hi-hat, then it's not grayed out, and we can actually change that. So uh, the difference between open and closed, and we can change how much that is happening. Again, a lot of information, um, but pretty... I think this is one of the most elegant parts of the whole thing, 
and uh, something that would apply to any other styles that they would add. That's the part that I like. It's that it's scalable. Um, although I do wish, for instance, um, we could add more things with the fills. So say we wanted the fills to be more aggressive or more simple. Right now, we have the amount of fills, and they tend to be slightly more aggressive when they're higher on this knob and more, less aggressive when they're lower. But um, we don't have a lot more control than that. So I wish we had more control. So typical workflow, we might come in and say, uh, we want this drummer, Kyle, right? It, it applies to the whole track. You can't switch out drummers on a single track. <clears throat> and then with that region, all of the settings down here in our drummer area, those are region by region. And that means that we can have two of these next to each other. And the first one has one set of settings and the next one has a different set of settings, right? So we can actually program complex patterns based on uh, what we're setting up for the regions. We can cut these small. We can just do like the end of a pattern, right? So with that, the, the benefit to this, of course, is, um, you know, let's do just that last beat. All right, so this one, we can say no fills. And then on that final little beat, we can say do a big fill. Uh, and then it will adjust accordingly. So I can do a controlled fill at the end of this. We'll talk more about that in a minute as well, because I do want to look at the, the regions here. They're just a like a MIDI region that's being controlled uh, interactively, but it's still MIDI data in the end. Okay, so choose our drummer, select our drummer region, adjust the settings, adjust the, the composition of which instruments are playing. Uh, we can adjust how many fills or how much the fills are going to play a role. We can push or pull the tempo, adjust the ghost notes, hi-hat, um, make it more complex, simple, or loud. And that adjusts all of those, uh, the parameters of that performance. Now, you'll see we have down here a little contextual menu. It says save preset, recall default preset, refresh region, Keep settings when changing drummers. Keep drum kit when changing drummers. So we have some ability to customize how things happen when we change them around. Uh, in this case, we might want to keep the, a custom kit we've created but change the drummer. We can have that change. Uh, we can also keep the settings of this area when we're changing the drummers overall. So we can experiment uh, with which parameters we want to change as we're changing different uh, drummers. Uh, and then we have all these different presets we can experiment with that are like the foundation of what we change from everything over to the right of that. So everything in the matrix and the composition, these beat presets, you'll see change those parameters. And so we're looking at different combinations of things as we go. Okay, all of that seems pretty, I think, relatively straightforward and is uh, easily masterable by someone who's using drummer relatively new. And I think that's the beauty of the drummer track, right, is, is that it is accessible in that way to anybody who's using it. We also have the ability here, and if you're ever wondering what some of these things do, don't, don't hesitate to turn on the quick help because they it does pop up. This is the auto select button. So the drummer editor always shows the current settings for the drummer region at the playhead position. Or uh, we also can just play one or more selected drummers tracks as we're doing it. So I and that mutes all the other stuff. Um, and you can always go into the help a little deeper for that if you want to. Let's turn that back off for a second. I just wanted to make sure you knew the quick help is a good reminder tool as you're working. Okay, 
so that's all one half of this. And um, we're going to, like I said, look a little deeper at that in a few minutes. But I want to look at the drum kit for a minute because there is some depth to this, which isn't straightforward. If you just load up a drummer kit, you're going to get uh, whichever kit of the drummer you're playing. Uh, and we can customize this quite a bit using various tools. So first and foremost, let's click on one of the components. You'll see that they light up when you hover. All right, so let's click on the kick. And this brings up, for this SoCal kit, three different kicks, which can be tuned, dampened, or the gain adjusted. And then the snare, we have three different snares with similar. No hi-hat changes, except for the tuning, dampening, and gain. No cymbal adjustments there, except for the same settings. Toms. We can't change those out either. So relatively limited, although we can edit the low, high, and mids right here with in terms of the tuning. So right, so all of that seems again relatively straightforward, clicking on them. Um, down below, I don't think we have too much happening down here, but we have a little bit uh, the shaker gain. I'll zoom up a little bit. The shaker gain, the tambourine gain, the claps gain, cowbell gain, sticks gain. And then we can also do an input mapping, which is between general MIDI, general MIDI plus mod wheel controls, hi-hat opening degree, super useful. And then the V-drum mapping. Um, so all of those allow for custom situations. Okay, what I want though most of the time is even more control than that because we can, for instance, let's go to songwriter, pop songwriter. We're gonna change the drummer. It loads up a different kit, different kicks, snares, and the symbols are different but we can't choose anything, but we're still limited here. Uh, and so that's something to consider with all of this. The Just the default stereo, stereo drummer track is relatively limited. Uh, one way to overcome this is by using the producer kits. Now over in the library, uh, right now you'll see down below here the drum kit. It shows which one I've got selected. We've got all of these different options. Um, but then we also have the producer kits. You have to turn on the advanced features of Logic and your preferences. I'll show you that really quickly right now. Um, let's see, Adva enable complete features is what they're calling it right now. Um, I, I, I'm trying to remember exactly if that triggers some of the producer kits or not. It used to, but right this moment it may or may not. Um, but under the producer kits, you'll see an expanded list, um, so Blue Ridge, Blue Ridge, but we have 8-bit above it, and Brooklyn, Brooklyn, but we have, uh, let's see, Detroit Garage, but then Demolition, so we have additional kits, and let me just click on one of the ones that's not on the main list right there, and you'll see that... It's this kit right here. Uh, so it's not being currently used by any of the stereo drummers, um, but it's an expansion inside of the drum kit area. So in the producer kits. So what do we get? What we get with the producer kits are the multi-track breakouts of the entire drum kits. So we have overheads on the first track, kick in, kick out, snare top, bottom, hi-hat, tom, high, mid, low, two room mic configurations, a leak track to give us the equivalent of having leaks uh, between microphones in the, in the kit, the tambourine shaker, hand claps, A and P, um, and then that's it. So the A and P is like a punch track. Um, I don't know if with quick help if we have anything with that. No, it's not telling us. We can look up 
But that's like a an additional track which adds um, like an alternate. Oh, let me turn that back off. Uh, some additional energy and punch. I think of it in my own head, kind of like uh, parallel compression. But um, let's see. It has. It's going through an amplifier uh, and some fuzz and some other processing. Um, so it's like a, just a processed copy that it's, it can be fed out. Add some excitement to your kit, right? Um, let's see what is, if that's actually being used here. I'm going to loop this and listen and just see if that amp track. So that's being heavily processed with this kit. Cool. So that's the demolition and it is being demolished. Um, Hi-Fi pop. Let's load in something else. And you'll see this one doesn't have the amp track or any other punch track. Um, so they're all going to be slightly custom in that area too. Okay, so um, what is all of this? Let's actually look at the mixer window for this one that's loaded up. You'll see that these all have EQ and some of the EQs are intense. Oh, I don't know who, who they had processed these. Um, snare top. I'm skeptical that that was necessary. Um, as I'm always skeptical when they put out things like that. But this is part of the the actual preset. So this isn't something I've done. This is all part of it. Okay, so with the producer tracks, we have all the multi-tracks out. Um, overheads, I'll just let you hear these for a second. Whoa. That sounds amazing. Kick in and out. That sounds pretty good. Here's the snare top. Ooh. The Enveloper, I love that plugin. And then a really heavy compression happening. I mean, it's not a huge ratio, but it's really deep into the threshold there. 100% on the mix. Cool. Interesting. Here's room A. And they've added a second, the room B, so you can actually choose which of the main elements go to the rooms, and they put the kick just in room B for additional processing. That's a clever way of doing some uh, parallel processing. Here's the leak track. And then I don't know if we're actually using any of those right now. I don't hear anything, so nope. Okay. All the processing comes on it. Doesn't mean you have to use it, but it comes on it. And uh, they even add an aux track with, in this case, space designer and a channel EQ, although the channel EQ is flat. And the space designer is using Prince Hall 1. Okay, cool. Okay. So this is some engineer... Uh, who decided to create this particular set of uh, mixing processing for this kit. Um, they've even panned a little bit there. Cool. You could have a master class in drum processing this way, but I feel like uh, I almost wanted to start fresh when I get this kind of thing because uh, some of the choices are interesting. But of course, it's Hi-Fi Pop is the producer kit, so... You know, it's like, I don't know what to, what I would expect from that. Here's the overall kit.
I find it hard to tell how the kit sounds until I start playing something with it. So um, interesting. And so we don't necessarily have, uh, we're still looking at, I, th I don't know which, so Darcy was the original drummer for that. Um, so let's do another one of these that, let's do 60 soul. We're still on the same drummer. Playing both at the same time. I hate. Logic still has this bug. Ooh, where the selected channel is still getting MIDI input, even though one is record armed. Cool. Okay, so with that, I just need to expand this down here in the bottom corner again to see all those. Um, awesome. So these are all routed back over to this uh, to the drum kit, right? So this track is an interesting layout. Um, this feature of Logic. So, for instance, if I do so these are all the inputs um, from the drum kit, which is this. So each of the components come out of that as a multi-output, some of them being stereo. So 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 are all stereo. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16 are all mono. And then 17 through 26 are stereo. It's an interesting uh, setup thing. I don't always understand fully why, for instance, the kicks are stereo. I doubt they were recorded with a stereo feed. Um, we can check that really quickly by using monitor, or let's see, uh, metering. We'll use the multimeter for a second. So it's a mono signal. The, if it was stereo, you'd see a bunch of spaghetti all over the screen. So I don't know why then they're using a stereo track. Seems less efficient. Anyway, interesting. Uh, okay, so we can go through and, and move all those around. These do have different, it's like they have channel strip settings. I don't know where, if we could even find where they are in here. But um, those are all saved as channel strip settings for each of those kits. And you could save your own if you wanted to and recall them for that. Okay, so let's move on back to the other part of this, which, yes, great. We have all of those tracks now. We can process everything individually. Um, it's a little different. For instance, like the kick in and out are so clean because there's no bleed, but we have the leakage track, which mimics that. So you have to think of it slightly different than a traditional drum kit, but it, it has all of the sound to create uh, in a, a realistic sounding kit. Um, if we open up the actual drum kit designer, now that we're in the producer kits, if I select the kick... You're going to see all of the kicks, the birch, 
punch, the maple boom, the maple punch, the pawn shop, loose, the pawn shop, punch, the 70s felt, etc. All the way down, right? So we have all of those. Uh, snares. A lot more snares. Um, it says download additional content, but I don't know if there's more or not right this second. That might just be what shows up at the bottom. Uh, toms. Tom sets. Symbol sets. Ride sets. Or rides. Hi-hat. Um, and that's it. So we have the ability to customize all of those things. On the right side, we have the tune, dampen, and gain that we had before, but we also have the ability to send them to the overheads or not. It's a nice distinction. If you want the overheads to be just a symbol thing and not have to roll off any snares or anything like that, then we can just, for instance, have the overhead turned off for the snare. Boop. I mean, wish we could do that in real life. And the leakage for some of these. So snare doesn't get to go in the leakage. Symbols don't. Toms get leakage. Snare gets leakage. And kick gets leakage. And then we can turn on and off room and send it to A or B. So the two different rooms. That's a lot of stuff, right? We just added a ton of functionality by using the producer kit that we didn't have previously. And it means we get to really customize the stuff. So for instance, let's play this. I'm gonna change the kick for a minute. And then I'm gonna also change the tuning, dampening, and gain on it. Cool. We'll leave that for the moment. Uh, you can always click on the information button to see exactly what it is. 22 by 20, laminated plywood, black and gold, deco coated, no front head, loose rattling. Awesome. <laughs> and then we go back to here. We don't have any additional things when we do the producer kits, but um, there's a few more things we should talk about when it comes to this. Uh, the first is, of course, let's record a little bit of the keyboard for a minute and maybe add a bass. And then we're going to look at some of the timing functionalities we have. Uh, let's see. Cancel. I hate that. Just a little bit, because I played early.
right, so we'll record that real quick. Okay, so here's where some of the really cool stuff that I think comes into play. One of them is the follow button, which is right down here. Follow, and we're going to have it follow instrument two first. And I'm going to have it follow instrument three for a second, which is the bass. I'm going to turn it back off. So it's taking what's in those tracks and adapting a little bit, like creating not exactly a custom pattern. We have you know a bunch of patterns here, but it's it's certainly trying to get one that matches closer to that. Uh, sometimes when you have it on a vocal, then it's going to try not to you know necessarily do a busy thing at the same time that something is happening with that one. Um, so I like being able to customize it. The other thing I'll do in conjunction with a pattern follower is the groove track. Um, which we turn on, I right clicked on the track header, went down to track header components, selected groove track, and now we're gonna set the groove track as the, um, the drummer, and we're gonna set these to uh, match the groove track with those two. Now we're gonna have to undo this in a second. So let's change the groove track to be the, the one key part and have the drums follow that. We're going to try all three. I mean, that one so far is not the winner. I'll explain why in a second, but let's do this last one. And that was not the winner either. Uh, because the timing is more fluid on those two, it means that um, we're actually, uh, it's going to mess up the drums a little bit. I'm going to move these in one bar, um, partially because every time I do this, it's removing some of the notes from the beginning of that region. And so I'm just going to adjust it so that it won't keep on doing that. So we're going to set the groove track as the drums. So let's look a little closer at, uh, at one of these tracks, right? And we can actually do it here, um, turning on and off for that key part. You'll see how much those MIDI notes right here are adjusting, right? I mean, that's, that's quite a big, a, a big change. So what's happening is it's trying to line up what I played on the keyboard with the beats of the drums, as you would in a, in a live band setting situation. You try to match the other musicians. This one can do it perfectly, obviously. As with any quantization, though, um, because we're doing this up here, you'll see it has the star, which means it's the groove track. We still have the quanti strength amount, 
and we can pull that down. So say we just want it to be 80% locked into the drummer. So that gives us a little bit of flexibility to keep it from being too perfect. Um, so I'm going to set the bass to 90, the keys to 80, and we're going to leave it like that for the moment. Now here's the next part of this because I think this is one of the cooler things. Um, say I really do want to have some sort of custom fill at the end, right? So we're going to do this section as, or maybe even half of that. I think we'll do half of that. I just used the marquee tool, clicked on it once to create its own region. In here, we're gonna turn up the fills. And in this section, we're gonna turn down the fills. So no fills in the first section, all the fills in the second section. I am gonna have it follow the bass. So I can control that fill more. Now, say I'm like, ooh, ah, I don't know if I really like that fill. I can change the, the amount, right, a little bit. And it does a different fill depending on the strength. All right, so we'll do a lesser fill. But say I'm still not getting exactly what I want. Um, we can right click on this, say convert to MIDI region. And here's that fill that was just created. So, and then we can come in. Here are all those parts. Um, let's click on this button. This is the button that tells us just to show the active thing. So say I really want to do like a double time thing here. Right, I mean, so I just did that with the MIDI. I'm eyeballing, so it's not even the right time. Okay, that's perfect. That's perfect. Don't don't try to convince me otherwise. And we could do if we want. And we can come back out of here if we want and say, you know what, let's do um like I want the kick to still hit, you know. That's ridiculous. It's too ridiculous, but fun at the same time. Context. <laughs> it's too it's too stupid um, but you get the you get the idea okay so you can create your cold custom thing if you want. You can never convert that back to a drummer track without losing it. So you're stuck with it at that point. Um, but that's okay because it's still the data that was originally created. You can always go back. So I mean, I could drag this over and just say, you know what, I want to just have that there. And then you won't have the, uh, the fills. You'd have to put that back in. But uh, if you convert this, 
to a drummer region, it's going to create a new thing based on the parameters. It's not going to use what you have in the MIDI data. Okay. A lot of pieces, right? A lot of pieces to this. There's the drummer track, which is the source of our groove track. We have the bass part, which the drummer track is following. So they're like going back and forth across each other in a way. Um, we have the producer kit and uh, all of the functionality there between choosing the kit pieces and mixing it with the multi-tracks. Uh, we have the drummer track control area, uh, which allows us to choose beat presets, use the complex loud matrix, choose the individual kit pieces that are being controlled, choose the patterns, have it follow. Um, we can change the feel, the ghost notes, the hi-hat amounts. Um, that's a lot of stuff. And... We haven't even looked at the drum machine designer or the step sequencer. The power of this hopefully is evident. It's so powerful. Um, and as just again, just to show you a demonstration of one thing we talked about earlier, the, the little play button in the top left hand corner of the region area down here, that allows me, that allows me to play this drummer region without all the other instruments so I can really uh, get a sense for what it sounds like without all the stuff playing. Okay, so between all of that, I feel like we have the ability to create some really interesting things. Now, what are we missing? We're missing a number of styles. We have some great drummers and drummer styles. They've added stuff over the years. It has not been totally stagnant. It feels stagnant of late, but that's because we had the addition of like spatial audio, which took a lot of time and energy, it sounds like. And we had the new Logic for iPad version. We have had a couple things in there that have come through. Um, I feel like some, like some of these kits in the producer section are newer. Uh, people just didn't realize that they were there. The problem is, and here's, I mean, here's the real problem with it. If we look at the rock section and the alternative section, the songwriter section, most of these are relatively, uh, relatively not part, not 100%, but relatively unchanged since the early days. Uh, we do have some uh, auxiliary percussionists as well, but so we don't necessarily have somebody who's using, you know, some of these kits with patterns. They're just different kits to use with the existing pattern. So what we need are more drummers in more styles. Country, metal, um, reggae, uh, I mean, you name it. There's so many things. Jazz uh, and all the nuances of jazz. Uh, I 100% believe we need a classical drummer as well who's doing uh, the whole uh, classical percussion battery uh, in various things we can do with scoring. Uh, I mean, why stop with just the selection we have? That's a mystery. Um, we also need um, more nuance in terms of the control of it. It's relatively easy for any one of us to do this and have a drum kit that sounds about the same as everybody else's. It's easy to do that. Uh, and what we need is more of a, I hate to use the word AI or the letters AI because Apple will never call it that. They'll just call it a even more human drummer. You know, they'll say something else. They, they don't use the words AI in any of their stuff. Um, even when there's clearly AI like things involved with it, um, that's a marketing thing. They want to, they want to be the ones who are doing the creative stuff and not some artificial intelligence. They want to be, oh, Apple did this thing that's so creative. They don't want you, us to think that there's an artificial intelligence involved at all. So what looks like AI to somebody like ChatGPT is maybe identical in almost every way for Apple, but they're saying it's not AI, it's us. It's our programmers. They made this beautiful thing that does this. Um, so great, don't call it AI, but make it so... Um, there's a repository of every drum 
drummer thing. Put every song in there in your library, Apple, that has drums. And uh, have your drummer engine learn how to play the drums in all of those styles. So that when somebody is playing a track and we put a drummer on there, uh, you can say, I want it kind of in this style, but I want it to be, you know, more of a improvis improvisation or uh, freshly creative every time. I want it to be all these things and have it play it so that it doesn't sound like it's the same pattern every time. Add a little bit more based on the catalog of music and then have it create fresh stuff. There's a few more things that I would talk about, but we're at 46 minutes and 42 seconds, and that was my limit for how long I had to do a stream today. I hope this was useful. Uh, go back and watch the other stuff. Um, and if you're interested in more streams like this, then let me know. Uh, I know it's been kind of a quiet audience, but uh, that's A-OK -okay sometimes. I think when information is being shared, that's perfect. So I really appreciate you all being on, and um, we'll be doing more streams this month than we have in a long time and more daytime streams in the U.S. So uh, let me know if there's topics that you're interested in. Otherwise, thanks for being here. And